I want to extend a hearty welcome to all of you who are here with us in uh, our lovely church, but also those who are joining us from home. We're so happy that you're here with us. And I would like to extend uh, an invitation for everyone to join us during coffee hour after the service today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, and Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? And I and your people, unless you go with us, in this way we shall be distinct. I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. 
and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and where while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cliff on the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, we received the 
you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the, um, <clears throat> but in every place, your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescued us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The, the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pass taxes, pass taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. And he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. Amen. Please be seated. The Pharisees and the Herodians confronted Jesus in today's gospel by buttering him up with false flattery. 
This is something they've done before. They wanted to catch him off guard so they can provide to the Roman authorities proof that he was a rabble rouser and needed to be dealt with. Interestingly, though, what they said was true. Jesus was a teacher. He was sincere. He taught the way of God in accordance with the truth, and he showed deference to no one. If only they believed what they said. It's not too often nowadays that we have coins in our purse or pocket, but the next time you run across them, take a look at the inscriptions. All of our coins have the phrases, in God we trust, and liberty. In Jesus' time, the denarius had the following phrase, Tiberius Caesar, august and divine son of Augustus. Divine son of Augustus. This meant that Caesar was seen as a god. You can bet that this is particularly offensive to the Jews of the time. The trap the Pharisees were setting was a particularly good one. It was a no-win situation, no matter what answer Jesus gave. If he said to pay taxes, he'd lose all credibility with the people who were opposed to foreign taxation. Better yet, if he said not to pay the taxes... Then he'd be branded as a collaborator or a seditionist, and he'd be hauled off to prison. That would have been the most expeditious resolution for the Pharisees' problem. Some people might think that Jesus' response shows that he thought that there were two distinct and opposite realms, namely the religious and the secular. Some traditions and denominations still think this, They want to cord themselves off from the vulgar and secular world. Alternatively, some want to change the secular world so that it reflects more with their interpretations of the religious teachings. They want to subsume the secular into the religious. Religious fundamentalists fit this bill. Jesus is not telling us to do either of these. There are two realms that are separate, but they do overlap, and they're not equal. By saying to give back to Caesar the images that bear his name, Jesus is limiting Caesar's dominion. The piece of metal with Caesar's image and inscription are on the coin. Give it back to him. We are to give to God what bears God's image, namely us. We are all made in the image of God. Give back to God, then, those things that bear the image of God. St. Ignatius wrapped things up rather neatly. Addressing God, he said, All that I am and all that I have, you have given me. I give it all back. All. The theme for our stewardship season today, uh, this year, is taking the next faithful step. Chris Timmon, Roseanne Myers, and their team have done a wonderful job. And I think the theme is particularly good for us and relevant uh, to us here at St. David's at this time. We are in a period of transition. God is indeed calling us to take the next step and to do it with faith. The vestry has been working with our app team to address those issues that need addressing. These fall into five categories. Ministry development and understanding, preschool, finances, relationship development, and culture and power dynamics. All of these require work, and some are pretty well on their way to presenting recommendations to the vestry and the app team. Our congregation is already taking the next step. What I want to emphasize, though, is that we're not doing it alone. We're being helped not only by the app team and our diocese, but also by the Holy Spirit. You, our congregation members, are very dedicated to St. David's, and you are deeply spiritual from what I've seen. Many of you have seen how God has worked in your lives and is continually to guide you. This spills over into your life here at church. God is most definitely guiding us toward the next step. We must do the work, but we already have a guide. 
we have the faith to take the next step. Stewardship is not just about funding our operations for the coming year, but I admit that is a part of it. We need money to pay our insurance, to keep the lights on, and to pay staff salaries. But we also need money to minister to those outside of the church walls. And through our Common Life Share Pledge to the world beyond our diocese, our pledges, whether there are individual pledges or the pledge that St. David's makes to the, our diocese, are themselves acts of faith. I'm speaking from experience. When I first started attending church, I knew that I wanted to pledge, but 10% was out of the question. 10% is the biblical standard. It's a t called a tithe. When I first started out, I was hovering around 1%. For each raise I received at work or when I changed jobs, I put a portion of the increase toward my church donation. Finally, I was up to about 5%, and I almost broke my arm patting myself on the back. All of this changed when I was seriously starting to respond to the call of ordained ministry. If I were going to be talking to people about tithing, I had better be doing it myself. When I became a deacon, I calculated 10% of my gross pay and wrote a check out for that amount to the church. I had no idea if I could keep contributing at that level but I was committed to adjusting my other expenses so I could. I stepped out in faith, scared to death, but I took that step and haven't regretted it since. Each of us has our own circumstances and needs, and I realize that. We have, I, what I want to encourage you to do, though, is to look at an incremental increase to what you've been contributing in the past if you've never completed a pledge card, consider doing it this year. Don't worry too much about the amount. Participation in the stewardship campaign is the important thing. For those of you who have been pledging for years, try increasing that pledge amount. If it's a percentage, how about 1% extra? Or if you calculate using a dollar amount, try increasing your weekly donation by another $10. That would be less than the cost of two Starbucks coffees. If you step out boldly and determine that you can't keep, keep it up, there's no problem with notifying our treasurer to tell her that you need to reduce your pledge. We know things change. Pledges are intentions. They're not contracts. They can change. Pledging is a tangible act of faith, and by definition, faith is a venture into the unknown. If we know what's going to happen in the future, we don't need faith. Fear is the chosen tool of all oppression. We've seen that particularly in the past few years when a group of people have been labeled as the other. But this has been going on even before Jesus' time. Jesus was viewed as the other, and he was causing trouble for the status quo. The biggest fear of all, though, is death, and Jesus has already conquered that. We're not called to live our lives in fear, but rather with joy and abundance. This is a time to recognize all that God has given us. The phrase St. Ignatius that I mentioned before, all that I am and all that I have you have given me, I give it all back, is frightening. All? Yes, all. Who is the one who gave it to us in the first place? If we start looking at ourselves as stewards of what God has given us rather than the owners, our perspectives will change. The question is no longer what percentage of my belongings should I give to the church. Rather, it becomes how can I be the best steward of what God has given me? Or said another way, what is God calling me to do with the things that I have been given? Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God those things that are God's. Amen.
Please stand as you are able, and let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the quick and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all, all may, may be, be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by, by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, for Kirby, our priest, for Nancy, our deacon, and for all priests and other ministers, and for the people of this congregation who minister in Christ's name, that they all that they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your, your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there may be justice and peace on, on the earth. earth. Give us the grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, for those suffering the consequences of war and violence, for those affected by racial injustice, for the many who still suffer from COVID-19 and from the op opioid and fentanyl epidemics, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others, especially for those on our parish, pr parish prayer list. We rejoice for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Let us pray for those we now name silently or aloud. We pray for all those who travel, especially Elaine and Steve. For Jeannie, Rich, and the family. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of All Saints Vista, the children and teachers of All Saints Preschool, and the diocese of the Protestants. Providence 8, Ohio, Los Angeles, Navajo Land Area Mission, Nevada, Northern California, and Olympia. In our military cycle of prayer, we pay, pray for the personnel and sailors serving at Naval Air Station El Centro. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So when continuing with our uh, stewardship campaign, Lori is going to have a few words to say about uh, stewardship. Hi, my name is Laura Lynn Wadsworth. I am new to St. David's. I was looking for a spiritual community to belong to. I wasn't even sure if it would be Christian. I first started going to St. David's at the Theology on Tap meetings that we used to have once a month. And uh, there was always a spiritual subject and that we would discuss. And uh, I loved that. I, I thought, this is a great thing. Um, I have a friend, Karen, who was doing a reading. And I wanted to, went to the church service to hear her read and support her. Little did I know that the whole church is a supportive <laughs> entity. And... Um, uh, and um, I found that I really like the congregation here, and I have been staying at St. David's uh, and getting baptized and confirmed because of the way the people have embraced me. I've only been baptized one month, and already St. David's has embraced me and have me doing readings and being a member of the choir. I've noticed I'm not the only person that St. David's has embraced this way. The other people I was baptized with have been embraced also with acolytes, sacred ground, and other lectors like me. So it's really because of the people that I stay at St. David's. The congregation here is wonderful. The church is beautiful too, but it's the people. Okay. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by the water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All, all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us taste the cup of salvation. Let us taste the cup of salvation. Let us taste the cup of salvation. Body Christ to go to heaven. Body Christ to go to heaven. Body 
And we offer for those of you who are worshiping at home with us a prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself in the bread and wine of communion that becomes your body and blood. Grant that we may receive you spiritually today in our hearts, minds, and souls, and that we may have confidence in your promise to be with us always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for these announcements. Good morning. It's just me this morning. Our senior, our Rector's Warden is in Hawaii enjoying herself. A uh, t- couple things. Kara Crawford reports that our, all the donated pumpkins that we brought in last week uh, were joined by many others at ECS and had a wonderful time. And pictures will follow uh, for Facebook, so keep an eye on that. Um, second announcement is the Flower Guild, our Flower Guild, is having a workshop on Saturday, November 4th uh, to learn how to make flower arrangements. And uh, we're opening it to the entire community. So please take some, uh, there are some announcements or some flyers on the back tables. Take them and post them in your local coffee shops or wherever you are to perhaps entice someone to join us. Today there will be a forum. Our treasurer, Jane, is going to give us a forum on uh, the 2024 budget at coffee hour. And next Sunday, you're not going to want to miss this, for Sunday forum, uh, Father Kirby is going to be uh, giving us some fascinating new research on Mary Magdalene, things that we kind of thought might be true, but are really coming out to be very interesting. So you don't want to miss that. Birthdays and anniversaries. I know there are some birthdays in the house. Oh, Mercedes, is your birthday? Oh, all right. I'm Mercedes, I'm Mercedes feet. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to offer a blessing for John Turley's birthday, who was the same day as Mercedes. So I'll stand in for him. I know he can no longer be with us, but thank you. My granddaughter, Claire, will be 17 on Thursday. As their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Anne, could you join me please? Go ahead. Do go ahead and sit down. <laughs> Some of you might have noticed we have a lovely picture of St. David here, and it was donated by Anne in memory of Jim. So I wanted to provide a blessing with holy water, and then Anne can also tell us a little bit about the, uh, the artist. But first, some of you probably know this, but others don't. I did know the second part. There are basically two symbols for St. David. One is the dove normally perched on his shoulder, in this case on his uh, uh, staff or or cross, but also he's usually shown on a little hill or hillock. 
And that legend comes from the time when he preached at the Synod of Brephy in Wales, and the ground started coming up underneath him to form a little hill. And as anyone who's been to Wales knows, there's not a scarcity of hills. So who knows if that is true or not? But then a dove came and rested on his shoulder. So those are the symbols that we have for St. David. Anne, could you tell us a little about the, uh, the artist? I found the, I found the print while I was researching uh, motifs, etc., for our banner and for our new logos, and I came across it, and it really entranced me. It's a, uh, there'll be an article in the Gospel, coming Gospel, about the artist, Jonathan Edwards. He's a British artist and quite renowned, and it's a print of a watercolor that he did. And uh, on a personal note, um, many of you didn't know Jim when he had a beard and longer hair, but when I look at it, it's a little, little bit of Jim in that St. David. And he certainly had the Holy Spirit around him. Absolutely. Lot. I'm not sure any hills ro rose up. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, the blessing I'm going to use is from a very old uh, priest handbook that I inherited from someone. So this is the old language that is in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in thee, we beseech thee so to bless and hallow this figure. Fashioned in honor of blessed David, thine bishop, that all who behold it with devotion may have strength and courage to follow his holy example. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Anne. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.